For this problem, we're asked to find all points at which r equals 3 plus 3 sine theta has horizontal and vertical tangent lines. Okay, so we want to find the points at which this happens. Okay, so here is the formula for finding the, the derivative of a polar function. Okay, so uh, f of theta is this function, 3 plus 3 sine theta, and f prime of theta is the derivative of this function, which we'll write down. Okay, so here's, here's the, the, the uh, derivative formula. Now, keep in mind that the horizontal slope, to find the horizontal slope, we'd set the numerator equal to 0. It's the top. And for a vertical slope, we'll set the denominator equal to 0, which is the bottom. And if you happen to get a place where both the numerator and the denominator are 0, then the slope will be vertical. Okay, so here's the function. And if we take the derivative of 3 plus 3 sine theta, we get 3 cosine theta. Okay, so first, let's start with the horizontal tangent line. Okay, so... Here's the numerator. We're going to set the numerator equal to 0. Okay, So I've already put this information in. Uh, f prime of theta was 3 cosine. The sine was part of the formula. And then f of theta was the original. r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine theta. And cosine was part of the formula. OK, to solve this, we're going to, we're going to work this out and maybe factor this thing. Okay, So I'm going to write this as 3 sine theta cosine theta plus I'm going to distribute here, so 3 cosine theta plus, distribute here, we get 3 sine theta cosine theta equals 0. Okay, notice that we have 3 sine cosine and we have 3 sine cosine, so that's going to combine to give us 6 sine theta cosine theta plus 3 cosine theta equals 0. Okay, now I'm going to factor. So what can I factor out of both of these? Well, I can factor a 3 out because 3 goes into 3 once, it goes into 6 twice. I can also factor a cosine because they both, both these terms have a cosine. So I'm going to factor out a 3 cosine theta. And then that will give me what on the inside? Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. The cosine's gone, but the sine stays. And then 3 cosine theta divided by 3 cosine theta is 1. Okay, so set that equal to 0. Now, we can use the zero product property to set each one of these individual terms equal to 0. Okay, so we have 3 cosine theta equals 0, which if we divide the 3, is just cosine theta is equal to 0. And then we've got 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0, and if we move the, the 1 over and divide by 2, we get sine theta is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so what we have to do now is figure out, well, where is cosine equal to 0? Well, this might be a good time for you to pull up a unit circle or have one have one nearby, or maybe you already know these, which is awesome if you do. Okay, so we're going to figure out where this happens. So um, what's the theta value for cosine that gives you an answer of 0? There's two of them on the unit circle. And remember, we are, we are doing this. We're going from 0 to 2 pi, including 0 but not including 2 pi. Okay, so you get theta is equal to pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And for sine theta is equal to negative 1 half, okay, that's going to be, let's see, theta is equal to 7 pi over 6, right, and 11 pi over 6. Okay, so that gives us our theta values for which the numerator is equal to 0. Not done with, with that part yet because we still have to find the points. Their problem said find the points. We've only found theta values. Points, when you're dealing with, with polar, is r and theta. We've got the theta values. We don't have the r values. Okay, so let's figure out what the r values is. Remember, r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine theta. Okay, so if we plug in some of these, so first off, let's, let's plug in the power over 2. So r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine of power over 2. Remember, sine of power 2 is equal to 1, so 3 times 1 is 1, so this ends up being 6, which gives us the point 6, comma, what's the theta value that goes with that? Pi over 2. Okay, now let's do the next one. R is equal to 3 plus 3 sine, what's our next theta value? There it is, 3 pi over 2. Remember, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so this is going to end up being... 
3 minus 3, which is 0, which gives us an r value of 0 that goes with a theta value of 3 power over 2. Okay, let's do the ones over here. So r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine of 7 pi over 6. Okay, so what is 7 pi over 6 on the unit circle for sine? It's going to be negative half. Okay, so we get 3 plus 3 times negative 1 half. So that is 3 minus 3 halves, okay, which is 3 halves. So the r value is 3 halves, which went with a theta value of 7 pi over 6. Okay, and for our last one, r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine of 11 pi over 6. Okay, and 11 pi over 6 sine is also negative. So this is going to give us the same thing, right? It's going to give us um, uh, 3 halves again. So 3 halves will be the solution to that. And it will be 3 halves comma 11 pi over 6. Okay, so these are the four points at which the numerator is equal to 0. Now let's go back and look at what we wrote at the beginning. It said horizontal slopes at the numerator equal to 0. But it also said if dy over dx is equal to 0 over 0, then we're going to call the slope vertical. Okay, so we're going to hold on to these points. We're not going to quite yet say that these are horizontal tangent lines because if we come up with one of these exact points uh, when we do the vertical tangent lines, then we're going to have to say that it's a vertical tangent line. Okay. So let's hold on to that for a minute. We've got, we've got the answers for that, but we'll come back to it. Now let's look at the vertical tangent lines. Okay, here's the denominator of that, of that uh, slope function for polar coordinates. Okay, and I've wrote down. So here's the, the f prime is 3 cosine theta. This was part of the formula. Here's the original function and sine theta. Remember, there's a minus sign here. Okay, so that's going to give us 3 cosine squared theta minus, let's see, 3 times sine with a minus, minus 3 sine theta, and then minus 3 sine theta times another sine theta is minus 3 sine squared theta equals 0. Okay, so how do I go about solving this? Well, I've got these two things are in terms of sine, and I've got this as a cosine. I know uh, using the identity uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Okay, so I can say, well, cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x, right? I know that's really small, but that is what I can substitute in here. So 3 times 1 minus sine squared theta, not x, we're dealing with thetas here, minus 3 sine theta minus 3 sine squared theta equals 0. Now I've got everything, everything in terms of sine. Um, let's multiply through. So we get 3 minus 3 sine squared theta minus 3 sine theta minus 3 sine squared theta equals 0. I can combine these two terms and make a negative 6 sine squared theta. So negative 6 sine squared theta minus 3 sine theta. I didn't forget about the 3. I'm going to put it on the end here. There's a reason for that. Okay, so this might look familiar. It might look kind of like a, a factoring problem, a quadratic factoring problem. We've got the term squared, we've got the term, and then we've got uh, no term in that. Okay, so first what I want to do is get rid of this negative sign and maybe get rid of any of the numbers that I can. So I'm going to divide this whole thing by negative 3. Both sides I'm going to divide by negative 3. So that should give me 2 sine squared theta, positive, because I'm dividing by negative 3, uh, plus sine theta, also positive. If we divide 3 by negative 3, we get minus 1 equals 0. Okay? So this is a factoring problem. It might help you to write it like this. I'll write it off to the side here real quick. Let me get a different color. Okay, so if this looked like this, it might make it a little easier. So 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, let me factor that really quick. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So negative 2, two things that add to get negative, 
or multiply to get negative 2 but add to get 1 are uh, 2 and negative 1. So that will, here's how I factor. I just put the 2x in both parentheses and then put the plus 2 here and put the minus 1 there. But then since this has two things in common, I divide by 2. So that gives me x plus 1 and this one stays, 2x minus 1. So how do I factor this? Well, it turns into this, right? But instead of x's, we don't have x's over here, right? We have sine, not x. So instead of x plus 1 and 2x minus 1, I'm going to write that in terms of sine. So it'll be sine theta plus 1 and 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Now again, we're, we can use the zero product property to solve these individually. So sine theta plus 1 equals 0. 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Sine theta is equal to negative 1. And then what would this be? Add and divide. So sine theta is equal to 1 half. Okay, so where does sine, on the, on the unit circle, again, that's from 0 to 2 pi, where does sine equal to negative 1? Well, that only happens once. Theta is at 3 halves, 3 pi halves, or 3 power over 2. Okay, there's only the one solution on the unit circle. And where does sine equal to 1 half? Okay, sine is equal to 1 half at pi over 6. and at 5 pi over 6, first and second quadrant. Okay, so we've got three values here, three values that, that should work for our uh, vertical tangent lines, but we need the points, so we need to plug those in. So remember, this is our function, r is equal to uh, 3 plus 3 sine theta. Okay, so if I plug in, r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine of 3 halves, or 3, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so what is sine of 3 pi over 2? Well, that's negative 1. We already figured that out up here, right? So this will end up being 3 minus 3, which is 0. So that gives us the point 0 comma 3 pi over 2. Okay. Uh, let's do our other two. R is equal to 3 plus 3 sine of pi over 6. Okay, and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we get 3 plus 3 times a half. Okay, so that's 3 halves. Um, let's see, that should end up being 9 halves. Okay, so we get the point 9 halves comma pi over 6. Okay, and then for our last one, r is equal to 3 plus 3 sine of 5 pi over 6. Okay, and 5 pi over 6 gives us the same value, it gives us a half, so this will also turn out to be 9 halves, which will give the point 9 halves comma 5 pi over 6. Okay, so this is the three places that the denominator is equal to zero. Okay, so we've got zero comma three pi over two, and then we got the nine halves with the power of six, and the nine halves with the five pi over six. If we look at our uh, at our horizontal tangent lines, we had six comma pi over two, we had zero comma three pi over two, and then we had these two three halves with the seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Which one of those looks the same? It's this one, right? So this one was found on both the top and the bottom. Okay, so we can't use that as one of our horizontal tangent lines because this one ended up giving us 0 over 0. So that's going to be a vertical, vertical tangent line. So we're not going to use it for the horizontal. Okay, so if we go back to the original question, which is here, Okay, it asked us to find all the points at which we have a horizontal slope and then all the points that we have a vertical slope. So for horizontal, so horizontal we get 6 comma pi over 2. We get 3 over 2 comma 7 pi over 6. 
and we get 3 over 2 comma 11 pi over 6 for our vertical. For our vertical we get, let's see, 0 comma 3 pi over 2. We get 9 over 2 comma pi over 6. And we get 9 over 2 comma 5 pi over 6. And that's it.